What's up guys, Damien here, and as you can see today, we have a package from Shapeways, even though I ripped it off a little bit there. But yes, this is from Shapeways. As you guys know, they're a 3D printing company that you can order from online, and I picked this up. This is the smallest Rubik's Cube you can actually buy right now. So it is the Elemental Cube, and I'm really excited to see if I can actually put it together. So let's check this out. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's over here. I already took it out. But as you can see, it's actually really small, the whole thing included. So now I want to open this up. Oh wow, there it is, down there in the bottom. That is the whole $35 thing. All right, so here it is. And as you can see, this angle just isn't gonna cut it. So I'm gonna zoom in for you guys. Okay, so this should be a little better. Now, as you can see here, we've got three sets of corners. Now with these corners, you actually get eight in each set. So there are 24 corners here and you only need eight for a cube. So that's good that they gave us so many extra. And I thought I would have enough to try two different ones, but it looks like they kind of went a little stingy on the edges. As you guys may or may not be aware, you need 12 edges to make a fully functional three by three. And it looks like they've given us three sets of four, which is 12 on the nose. So that is a little bit worrying because that's normally the last piece I put in is one of these tiny edges and I hope I don't break it. But it looks like there's a bunch of extra center caps also. So these are the cores. And now what I'm assuming you do is you just push the center pieces down into those holes. So first off, let's break those apart. That was pretty easy. And now let's get some center caps. Okay, so here you can see I've separated six center caps away from the edges that they were attached to. I'm gonna to try to put them into this core. So let me see here. It looks like the shape of the hole on the core matches up with a, an orientation that you have to put the center cap in. Okay, so that was a fail. Now what I'm gonna do is try to salvage this core and pull that piece out. All right, well that worked at least. Okay, I don't know if you could hear that, but it actually popped into place and it turns. So there's one center cap in. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and try to do the rest of these and I'll let you know how that turns out. Also, you can see here on the face of the center piece, it actually has a little stub and you gotta get rid of that or else I don't think the stickers will fit. And there they are, all four center pieces put in. Now they seem a little bit flimsy and I don't know if that's intentional, just part of the design, but at sizes like this, you can only expect so much, right? So now let's start putting in the edges and corners. All right, so as you can see here, I've got the core, the 12 edges on top, and the eight corners down here at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is now try to start putting this thing together. And that is not going to be easy. So firstly, I'm gonna just take an edge and try to put it between two center pieces. Okay, so just like that, and that was not as easy as I thought it would be, but not that hard either. So now I'm just gonna build up a cross around this center piece and just build my way up from there. Okay, so there is the cross built. And now I'm just gonna to try to slide some corners down in here. Now I don't know how well that's actually gonna go, but we'll know shortly. There's one in, and I still need to clean up this stuff. It's kinda of getting on my nerves. All right, and there is one layer done. Now as you can see, I've still got these nubs on here from where they broke apart from the pieces that they were attached to. And I'm gonna clean that up later. But for now, this is pretty good progress. So now on to the second layer. Well, in the process of trying to put this edge in, I actually broke the base off of a corner. So maybe that's why they gave me more corners. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is try to build the top layer before putting this last edge in, just like you do on a typical three by three. 
Okay, so I've ran into a problem. And as you can see, I've got the whole cube assembled minus this corner and this edge. Now, every time I try to put a corner in, it just breaks. Now, let me show you. Hopefully it works this time. But there's really no option other than forcing it at this point because it's not like you can loosen the piece. See, and it just breaks off like that. So I'm not sure where to go from here. Let me get that out of there first. Maybe if I turn it a little bit like that, that can give me the extra room. Let's try that. Okay, so what I think I've decided to do is take out this edge and hopefully that gives me enough room to put the two corners in then I can just squeeze the edges back in. Okay, so step one complete. All the corners are in. Now I just have these two edges left and it kind of makes me nervous because I don't have any spare edges and the only way to put these in is to force them. So now's as good a time as any, let's try it. And I think I have it. Now you can see I've still got some shaving to do here and of course it needs stickered, but I'm just super excited that I actually got this thing assembled and let me see how many pieces I actually have left. So it looks like I actually broke four corners but I have three left over here and eight left here. So I guess they assumed you were gonna break a bunch of corners, but I only broke one of the center caps and I still have a core left. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do anything with this stuff or even if I wanna try, but it's pretty cool to see that they give you so many extra parts. I just wish there were a couple extra edges because when I was forcing that last edge in, I was supremely nervous that it was gonna break and I wasn't gonna be able to do this video. But it's exciting that it is finally together, so now I'm gonna clean it up and sticker it, and I'll show you guys a checkerboard. Okay, so here's the cube stickered as best as I could do, just because you have to cut it by hand and it's so small. But here it is on top of a quarter, just for a reference for size. This thing is actually extremely tiny, guys. Now I know that there is a smaller one out there, the one that Callum designed and Tony Fisher actually sanded down, but you can't get that one anymore because of the restrictions on Shapeways. So whenever I'm able to get that, I'll definitely do it. I just can't right now. But like I said, here's this one, and now let's do a checkerboard pattern just to show you it is actually functional. The turning is actually pretty stiff, which is surprising. I thought it would be kind of rattly where there are obviously no springs or screws in this. It's just the center caps that are placed down in the holes of that core. So it's kind of surprising that it turns so tightly and I feel like it's constantly going to break, but so far so good. And hopefully we can make it through this whole checkerboard without breaking this cube. Because even though I have some magnetic puzzles, this is probably one of the more expensive three by threes in my collection. Actually, it definitely is at $36. The only ones more expensive are the shape mods, like the treasure chest and the magnetic puzzles. So I'm getting a catch somewhere. Oh no, I broke my $36 puzzle. So I've set the cube on top of this GTS2 for a size comparison. And as you can see, it is extremely small. It doesn't really do it justice just telling you that it's eight millimeters across. You have to see it next to something that you can relate to. And that is crazy small. But anyway, this is a little disappointing. The fact that the corner broke when I was putting it in a checkerboard, but you know, that's bound to happen. And that's why they gave me more corners, right? So I can take it apart and put a new corner in it. Now, will I do that? I don't know. It's extremely tedious. And I'm not even sure that I would want to try stickering that corner again just because that was such a pain. But anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching me fumble through this assembly. I really hope you did enjoy it, and you'll hear from me really soon, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.